Welcome back to the Plant Web Lab here at Emerson Process Management in Marshalltown, Iowa. I'm James Holloway. In this video, we're going to show you how to mount a FieldView DVC 6200 digital valve controller to a Fisher 657 or 667 size I actuator. For this video, we will mainly use a fail up 657 size 40i actuator, but we'll show a fail down 667 size I from time to time to point out a few important differences. Both the 657 and 667 size I have an integrated mounting pad to facilitate mounting of a digital valve controller. However, the 667 size I has an integral air passageway which the 657 size I does not. This enables you to mount a DVC 6200 on the 667 size I without any exterior tubing. We'll explain this in more detail later. As always, we want to make sure we review all the safety precautions found in the instruction manuals for the DVC 6200, 657 size I, and 667 size I actuator. You can find these documents online by following the links in the video description below. Take time to ensure you have the necessary safety equipment and tools needed for this assembly. Safety glasses, safety gloves, the black mounting template packaged with your DVC, a screwdriver, and a wrench. We need to take two precautions before proceeding. First, completely isolate the valve and actuator from the process if it's in service. Second, you must ensure that there is no force on the actuator stem. For the 657 size I, we need to completely vent the actuator to ensure the stem is fully retracted. For a 667 size I, applying pressure to the actuator equal to the upper operating range will bring the valve plug off the seat and remove force from the coupling block. The next few steps are identical for the 657 and 667 size I. With the actuator in fail up position, we're going to install the connector arm onto the coupling block. Depending on the size of your actuator, the connector arm may have slight variations, so always check that your mounting kit is the right size for your actuator. To attach the connector arm, first remove one of the two bolts from the coupling block. Then install the bolt through the slot in the connecting arm and tighten. Repeat this process with the other bolt. Be sure that when the connecting arm is fixed in place, the thin slotted extension hangs downward. Leave the bolts loose because we'll fine tune the alignment here shortly. Next, we'll attach the magnetic array to the connector arm. This is done by lining up the magnetic array to the right of the slotted extension on the connecting arm. Once in place, fasten the array with the two screws provided until they are snug but do not over tighten them. We'll fine tune the alignment of the connecting arm and magnetic array using the black alignment template. Insert the alignment template into the actuator yoke leg as shown here and move the connector arm horizontally until the array fits the channel in the template. Tighten the bolts on the coupling block to fix the connecting arm in place. Now you must adjust the array to the correct vertical position. Start by loosening the snug screws so that the array is free to move up and down within the thin slot. For a 657 size eye, adjust the array so that the bottom white line is even with the white line on the alignment template. For a 667 size eye, once the cap screws and the connector block have been properly tightened, relieve all actuator pressure to ensure the valve plug is seated. Then, Adjust the array so that the white line on the template is even with the top white line on the array. With that in position, tighten the screws holding the array. Please note that your mounting kit may include a hex key to be used with the magnetic array fasteners. For added security, especially in vibrating services, medium thread locker may be applied. Once we've aligned the magnetic array, We'll stroke the valve one complete cycle to make sure the template's white line stays within the lines on the array for the full travel distance. Now that the array is properly aligned, we can mount the DVC to the yoke. With a 667 size eye, air travels from the output port in the back of the DVC 
to the input port on the front of the mounting pad. To protect this connection, place an O-ring included with the mounting kit in the port prior to mounting the DVC on the yoke, as shown. The 657 size I doesn't have an integral air passage, so it uses tubing to transfer air like a traditional actuator. However, you do need to plug the pneumatic port in the back of the DVC to prevent air leakage. Position the DVC on the actuator's mounting pad and line up the three corresponding bolt holes. Place the three long hex cap screws through the rear of the yoke into the DVC. For a 657 size I, use tubing to connect the actuator's pneumatic input port with the DVC's output port. We've now learned how to mount a FieldView DVC 6200 digital valve controller to a Fisher Type 657 or 667 size I actuator using the integrated mounting pad on the yoke. So, let's review the steps we took. First, we installed the connector arm to the coupling block. Remember to relieve the pressure in the actuator when using a 657 size I, or Use air to lift the valve plug off its seat with a 667 size eye. Second, we attach the magnetic array to the connector arm. Third, we use the mounting template to properly adjust the connector arm and magnetic array. Fourth, we confirm that the pneumatic output port in the back of the DVC is plugged for a 657 size eye. For a 667 size eye, we ensured the O-ring was in place prior to mounting the DVC to the yoke. Finally, we attached the DVC 6200 to the yoke using the three hex cap screws. Tubing was installed for 657 size I. For more information on the Fisher 657 size I and 667 size I actuators, FieldView DVC 6200 or any other Fisher products, visit the website below. And thanks for watching.